So I think by now everybody knows about this uh, HD link cable for the original Xbox system. Fortunate part about this is it's not available all over the world. Pretty costly for what it is. So in this video today I'm going to be showing you guys how to make a homemade original Xbox to HDMI converter for around five to seven dollars. Stay tuned. <laughs> All right, what do you know, what do you do, what do you say, my YouTube viewers? Retro Pro Frank with another installment today. And today I have what's known as the Wii 2 HDMI converter. Now, this is a simple device, and it's quite genius, actually. Um, it takes a Wii, Nintendo Wii system uh, output, and it outputs to um, HDMI. And I'm thinking that that's an extra audio. I haven't even tested this, okay? But uh, I've seen it done before on the forums where guys were taking this and they were making this out of it. Now this is like an altered version of this. So you can see what we've done here. Um, we have the original Xbox connection D port here um, in its place for the Wii. And the other side's like exactly the same. Okay, so actually this side doesn't get touched at all. <clears throat> So yeah, so there's a lot of uh, little soldering that's involved with this. Uh, if you guys have some patience, you guys should be able to do this. Anyone should be able to do this, really. Now, these online um, go for around $5 Canadian or maybe $4 US shipped right to your door. Um, from what I've heard, there's different revisions, okay? Now I'm going to show you the how to how to make one of these actually, but I'm going to show you on this board on this revision board because there are different revisions. So um, if you're following this video, you want to make sure that it's the same board that we're pulling out of here, okay? Because there are slight differences. I know that there's a white model of this. You want to stick with the black. Make sure it says Full HD 1080p. I can leave a link to the seller in the description. If it's not there right now, it will be there shortly. Um, I'm just that means I'm just finishing off the video. But uh, yeah, so um, basically, um, this you know it took me a few I don't know a few hours to decipher. Um, so I got it all connected pretty good, and I shared it amongst the uh, the forums there, and the guys couldn't believe how clear it looked. For the price and for what it is um so they wanted me to make a video and i actually wanted to make a video on this as well since there's no other videos online right now as of today uh to do this uh, mod so without uh, getting into it too much um as long as you follow the video step by step you should be fine this might be a little bit of a long video i urge you guys to please watch the entire video there might be stuff that you guys might miss okay so I don't want you guys to miss anything, okay? And once again, I'm not responsible if you screw up any of your uh, adapters or if you screw up your Xbox. Please don't come crying to me. As long as you follow this instruction guide and um, my pinout, my schematic, you should be fine, okay? Um, I, I got this in the background here. I'm going to take this out. See, Pound didn't send this to me. I bought this with my own money. Uh, for the most part, you know, I was kind of happy with it. You know, it did do what it was supposed to do. And it was, it allowed me to do a lot of the capturing that um, I, I've been doing lately with the original Xbox uh, with my capture card. This in conjunction with the capture card. But now, you know, moving to this, it's like, you, why did I even buy this? And Pound, there's no way uh, they didn't send me this for free. Nobody's sponsoring me in this video. These are my thoughts. Everything's bought with my own money. So I just wanted to share that there are different options available uh, if you wanted to go the HDMI route with your original Xbox. Okay, so obviously you're going to definitely need one of these. Okay, they can be purchased on Amazon, eBay, Alibaba. Okay, try to get the black one that says Wii to HDMI, uh, Full HD, uh, 1080p. Make sure it's, you know, it looks about the same with the holes and everything. Okay, and we're going to dismantle this. And you're going to need um, an Xbox wire of some sort. Yeah, if you have one that's half broken, like this is all sticky and everything, so I don't mind sacrificing this. You're going to have to sacrifice something. 
uh, one of these wires, you can either do a brand new one like I did on my original. Here's a brand new set of cables. Okay. Just cut the end off and uh, soldered it up in order to make uh, this adapter here. So you're going to need one of these for sure. One of these for sure. And you're going to need some wire. Now, the shorter you keep the wire from the connections from this motherboard to the actual D port, the shorter the better, less interference. To be honest with you, on this one over here, I'm running no shielding, just a couple ground lines. There's actually a total of five ground ground uh, lines coming off the D port. So, uh, and there's really, it's actually, I'm quite impressed with the quality of this. It's, if, if it's not the same as that, it's pretty damn close to that. So, actually, let me take this right out of the shot. All right, so that's better, okay? So, there's going to be a couple other things you're going to need. Uh, some kind of flux, no matter if you use uh, that kind of flux or pen flux, whatever is easiest to use. Probably in this one, I'll go with the pen flux. You're going to need some sort of wire cutters and snippers. Okay, I just use these uh, cheapos. They, you know, they can get down on the wire really good. Um, you're also going to need a soldering iron. Okay, so that's my soldering iron. Just picked it up at Princess Auto. I don't know if you guys have like a Harbor Freight in your area. Pretty much, you want to get something with temperature control. If you're going to be buying a soldering iron, spend the extra five, ten bucks. Get something with temp control so you can control it. Believe me, this is more important than what you think, especially if you're just starting out. And uh, something with a sponge to clean to clean your solder would be great too. Another thing you're going to need is some wire. Um, you can get all fancy and color code everything. Like if you want to do the red, green, blue, and black for ground. And you know what, on my first one, yes, that's what I did exactly. But to be honest with you, anything that's thin gauge, um, just try to cut them all the same size, okay? And uh, pre-tin the ends. So you want to... Even if you have a pair of helping hands, they're not very expensive. They're like two bucks on eBay. I'll try to leave a bunch of links in the description here for you guys. Try to help you out a bit. So any kind of wire. You can use solid core, uh, but I find it to come off a little bit easier. On these kind of installs, I like to use an actual uh, stranded wire. It almost acts like rebar. So it really doesn't matter what kind of wire. But you want 11 lengths, all the same, about six inches long or so. Um, does these look familiar guys? This is from this so I like to reuse things you guys know what these are from Oh, yes, these are from DVD players from original Xboxes. So it's kind of funny It's gonna be used again for another original Xbox, but uh, yeah, so Let's get 11 wires here. So I got one two three four One short we'll pick the red and we'll use that for five volts It's gonna move these out of here. It's actually good. It was one wire short because now I can show you what I mean by pre-tinning. So you just want to take your helping hands. And me, I just put some shrink wrap on it. On the end so it's not so aggressive. Okay. I'm going to show you what I mean by pre-tin. You just want to take the wires. It just makes it easier, to be honest. It's not necessary, but I mean, I like to do it. You just want to take the wires there. And you take your soldering iron. Just hit you guys. Assault. And you want to take the wire and just apply the soldering iron to it. See, like you can see how this takes a little bit of time. So you want to get all that pre tinning out of the way. And that's it. Boom. That's it. So now it's got a little bit of uh, solder on the end. So that's going to make it a lot easier to um, work with so now that you have all your wires all cut and ready okay um you could take actually your actual you can start working on the actual connection here the actual board and this end is the uh, we end so it doesn't really matter about this end if you break it if you don't me i just kind of want to get it a little bit without damaging it you don't want to damage it so you might want to get something a little bit bigger on there. Got some pliers here. So we're just gonna Okay. Just gonna try to now, you don't want to break it off the board, you want to bring the whole board out so you can see all that plastic coming off there. 
that's the goal. We want to try to get all of that out. So you might have to get in there with a with a knife or a tool just to get all this stuff out. Okay, you can see we're making room. I don't know if that's one piece or not. But hope the lighting is okay, guys. Okay, and now that should just slide right out. And there you go. Okay, so there's the other end. You want to keep this, okay? If you want to clean that up and make it look a lot nicer, by all means, go ahead. And you can just take those rough edges out and clean it up, okay? Now you're stuck with this. Here's the board here. A couple different ways you can do this. You can, like, rip this right off like this. There you go. And you got nothing but these guys left, okay? You can see it there. If the camera ever focuses, holy. Okay, there you go. You can see it right there. Okay, you can see. So those are the old original Wii connectors. Those are all going to have to be removed. So in order to do that, I like to use the helping hands again. And pretty much I, I just want to heat up the uh, tin here, the solder, and just pull it off one at a time. You guys want to make sure that they go directly into the garbage because if this goes into your foot, it's not going to be a good day. I'll tell you that much. Okay, so see how easy they come off? Okay, you might even be able to get away without even... There, yeah, there you go. You can just scrape it off. Heat and scrape. Look at that. Nice and simple. Okay, so there's one side done. So now we can flip it over. What are you doing, doggy? Hey? Oh, is it raining outside today? Yeah. Okay, you can see everything's labeled, so this makes it a lot easier. So we're just going to keep using that technique, heating it up and chucking it down, heating it up, chucking it down, over and over. Okay, I hope you guys can see that, what I'm doing. We are in 1080. You turn the uh, resolution up on your smartphone or your Android or whatever tablet or whatever the heck you guys are using. Uh, you'll see it a lot clearer uh, because I'm kind of behind the camera. And I can't really see what's going on here. See, now we're missing a little bit of solder. So we're just going to add some solder. To each one of these pads okay now well, the goal here actually it's now's now's the best time to pull out a flux pen okay get a little bit of flux on the actual pins and this is gonna believe it or not just that much right there is gonna make it stick so much better and it's gonna make our lives so much easier to work with this so let's go back to this and it's a rainy day here in Pizzaville just a joke guys it's a rainy day okay and I just want to tin everything up and get a little bit more solder on there get it ready for our wires okay and there we go see that see how it's a lot nicer looking there. You can see this, the actual solder. Okay, now we're going to flip the board over. Okay. And now we're just going to do this side the same way. Okay. Actually, let's get some uh, flux on it before I forget. Hope you guys are watching the entire video. That really helps me out more than what you guys ever think. Uh, you might think, oh, well, you know, I don't want to waste an hour watching it. I just want to fast forward to the juicy parts. But you know what, guys? I'm helping you out. Maybe you guys don't mind helping me out watching the whole video. And please don't forget to subscribe. Now is a great time to do so if you're not already subscribed to the channel. Okay. All right, 
Now the purpose behind that, you're like, well, why why did we just add solder? Because now it's going to make our connection a lot stronger because there's actual solder there. The only thing you want to watch for is you don't want to have uh, an arc where you know one pad is touching the other make sure you look with a magnifying glass and that there's a space in between all of these okay now there's one more spot on this particular model um, right here where it says ground we're just gonna give it just the right just like that okay okay so that's the other grounding point so for the board side for the actual decoder decoder board that's done that's ready we just have to add stuff if you guys want now's a good time to go over it with some isopropyl alcohol and a q-tip just get some of that uh, old flux off you can see it getting shiny and nice and clean now and you can see all the connections better okay i'm going to turn it over do the same thing you want to be able to see all that okay and even over here why not Okay. Now, if you look at that, a, a number of these aren't going to be used, like PR, PB, Y, ground, and L will be used, and R, 5 volt, and ground will be used on this side. Other than that, that's about it. So, we're pretty much done with this board. This board can be put aside for now, and now is time that we get our donor connector for the D port and I'm just gonna cut this this wire isn't in good shape at all okay maybe keep this for project or something down the road so you can cut it right down flush to here all right because you can reuse this after if you like now this is a bit of a trick you never want to take this thing apart because if you do you'll never get it back together believe me so the best way to go about doing this part i found is just to take something skinny see those little tabs there you got something that small that will fit in there it's even better but if you get something skinny enough where you can just get in there even just once okay use a little bit of force and just pull back you just want to stretch out this uh plastic black material that's been here for 15 years <laughs> You just want to stretch that out a bit, okay? You're not looking to do this all in one shot. So flip it over. Get in there. Okay. Same thing here. Now, if you don't want to sacrifice one of these wires, you can always order one of those cheapos from um, Amazon or eBay for dirt cheap. And, uh, you know, this way you don't have to sacrifice an original wire. And you can see, boom, that slides right out. And then this is what we're left with here. Okay, so we want to pop this section off here. But you can see that there's a little bit solder here. So we can actually remove this completely. Oop, she went somewhere. <laughs> we're going to peel this back just a tad. See what I'm doing here, and as long as this isn't soldered, which I think it's not, I hope it's not, I can peel this back as well, and you can see it popping out. See how this side's popping out? That's exactly what we want. So now that that's popping out, we just want that top piece to come off. Beautiful. Say bye to the shielding and all that because we're never going to be using that again. Okay, and you can see inside there, so we'll just remove this, boom, and there we go. So right now, you want this piece, this piece, even though it's a little bit bent, we're going to fix that after. Okay, that's, that's an easy fix, actually. Okay, we can fix that up. So we're going to save those two pieces, and we're actually going to save this piece as well. And we're just going to put these aside for now. We'll save those for later. So we're just going to remove all these pins, boom, boom, nice and quick, okay, alright, now we're going to flip this around, okay, 
I'm going to remove the last of the pins. Hope you guys were able to see that. So now we want to make sure that this is the right direction. This is upside down. This is the bottom. Nice way of figuring out and trying to know what's the bottom, what's the top, is by actually physically marking it somehow. Um, if you have like a, a whiteout or something that you could put a dot, that would definitely help. Um, I, I would totally recommend that. So... I don't have it. Let's just pretend that I did and I marked it. I know that this is the the bottom. So we're going to start with the top here. All right. So pin number one is right side audio. So we're going to take our pre-tinned pins. Pre-tinned wire, sorry. And we're going to attach this to... Pin number one. Pin number two is ground. And there's pin number two right here. So this is actually a little bit long. I'm just going to trim this wire. Okay. And then pin number three, four, and five we're gonna skip. Pin number six has to be jumped to 18. We're gonna skip that for now. Uh, so pretty much it's the last four. We're gonna have to put a couple more. So the last four, this one here on the very end, let's tin them up and get them ready. So this is a ground right there. And this is a ground right there. I'm going to go ground, and it helps when you blow, it, uh, what it does is it actually makes the connection dry a lot faster, and you want to kind of keep it in close, you don't want wires overhanging to the other side, we're going to now solder on the green. Okay, so there we go. There's the green. Now next to it is another ground. Okay. There's the ground. You want to make sure that nothing's touching and nothing's overlapping. Then we have one more pin on this side, and that is pin number nine. So this is pin number one. And if you count all the way this way, it's going to stop at pin number 12. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, so now we're working on pin number nine. Pin number nine, which is blue out of the three colors. So what we have here really is audio right. This is the audio right. This one here. Pin number nine is the blue video signal. This one here is the green video signal, okay? So these three right here are all grounds. You can pretty much just tie them up. This first pin is pin number 13, and then it goes all the way to pin number 24. So pin number 13 is five volts. And remember how it was one wire short? I'm gonna use a red wire on that. Now we're gonna have to pre-tin this a bit. And being the type of material it is, I'm just gonna wanna give it just a really small touch of the flux even if I'm not using those pins it's okay I can always clean it up just like that <sighs> hold it till the solder dries completely and then that's it I'm gonna put that forward so there's our power our one different color <laughs> okay and the next one next to it is pin number 14 which is going to be the left side audio <sighs> Okay, that's a good success. So we just uh, soldered on our left side audio there. <sighs> okay, that's a lot better. So our two last wires is another ground, okay, on pin number 21. 
and the red connection on pin number 22. So let's ground her up. And for jumping material, I, I just use 30 gauge solid core. And this would probably be best to do first, right off the bat. Okay, so there's one. There you go. It might be easier to use a screwdriver or something just to get it into place. Just like that. There you go, done. So this side, the hardest part, um, the Xbox side is completely finished. Let's remove it and let's inspect our work here. Okay, if this ever cleans up, there we go. Okay, so you can see there's our bridges. Looks very good, okay. Nothing's touching, okay, you, you want to look over everything, and you know that this is the bottom because it's the 5 volt side, okay, so let's flip it over to the top and take a look here, again, nothing's touching, okay, that stagger really helps a lot, if that wasn't there, we'd be, uh, we'd be screwed a little bit, guys, well, like, I mean, it wouldn't be impossible, but it would be pretty difficult, so now you're left with something like this, okay? Just like that. And if you want, you can get fancy and put the tape there. And you have this end here. All these ends now have to be connected to this board. Which, to be honest with you, a lot of these are grounds. So this is the easy part. If you got through this part right here and you did all this correctly with no arcs or anything... Uh, congratulations because this is the hardest part this is a lot easier to solder to and to work with so now all we have to do is run each wire where it goes on this board very simple R stands for right side R audio okay uh, 5 volt obviously ground MM is nothing ground and NC NC is nothing so we're only hooking up the four pieces here so we know our 5 volts is this guy right here, the red one. So now we're going to solder directly to this board. The right side audio, we need this. We need 5 volts. And Okay. Now see how the wire, I put it right close to the board. That's what you want to do for everything. I'm even going to move this up a bit because you don't want it touching the other side of the board. Later when you uh you know when you when you wrap everything up you don't want the right side and the left side of the board or the top and the bottom side of the board arcing out okay so we have two more grounds here this is the ground move it up a bit right there okay and that's it so we're done the top side of the board now and it's funny because it's only four connections and two of them are ground. So now we have top side of the boards done. You can see what we're kicking here. So now we're going to flip it over to the bottom side of this board. And you see what I was talking about? Bringing them right up to the top. You don't want wires sticking past here. You want it up to the, up to the top of the board. That's the easiest way. So, on this side of the board, the right side, you can see that L, that stands for left audio, NC, don't worry about that, G is ground, Y is, Y, P, B, and P, R, those three are the blue, um, sorry, blue, red, and green of the components, so those are very, very, very important. So, what we have to solder to on this side is ground, left side audio, 
those three connections and this ground right here two are going to be tied into that so let's start working on that now beautiful there you go and you got the left side connected we got stereo baby yeah welcome to 1975 okay hopefully that's not too much solder and let's just push it up a bit <sighs> okay So now, all that's left are these two grounds. So these two are going to have to get soldered together and put over here. And because this is going back in a case, I would try to keep it on the inside of the board like that. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to cheat a bit. I'm going to actually solder these two together. So if it allows me to, yeah, just like that. Hopefully, <sighs> so the one's bridged onto the other. That's nice and tight. Okay, and there we have it. There's our masterpiece of wires. <laughs> Believe it or not, that's a lot of wires. So uh, we can get creative. We can twist them up a bit being very careful not to damage the ends okay maybe if we twist it a bit and we can fold it you know it should not be this long guys I would I wouldn't recommend making the wires this long it shouldn't be longer than that but I mean sometimes that's the way she goes doesn't always go as planned so this looks a lot different than what I just showed you two seconds ago why because uh, this is the next day so just so you guys know following the video all the connections I mentioned are perfectly fine uh, everything in the video that I showed you is exactly where everything has to go so no no bother there last night as soon as I was done I was just about to put this in I put it in and I checked it out, and it was working, but for some reason, it was displaying in the color pink, and, and I didn't understand it. So I checked every single connection on both sides. I checked everything here. I checked this connector. I checked that connector. I, I pulled out my schematics here, and I looked over every single piece of everything that I, that I had written down here. And I couldn't understand it. I, you know, it was driving me nuts. I'm like, why is it pink? Why is it pink? Something's wrong. Maybe something's wrong. So then I'm like, maybe the wires are too long. So I cut the lot wires a lot shorter. Same thing. So sure enough, as I'm stewing, this is like hours later. I'm like, what the hell could it possibly be? This board's no good. It came in defective. I checked everything perfectly. And it was fine. Actually, what I ended up doing was because I had one more left, I took another one, I just laid it right across, and I transferred all those wires very fast. And I turned it over and transferred all those wires. And I'll get into this in a second as well. And I plugged it in. Sure enough, clear as day, they sent me a defective board. Okay, so something on this board's not right, and that's why it was displaying in pink. And that's why this video is going to be a little bit longer right now. But I just wanted to explain that. Another thing I found out too. I was under the impression that the two extra grounds had to go to where it says G and D. It's ground. You can also go to these grounding points here. So the only different thing I did um, aside of the video was instead of bringing the two grounds to here was I just brought one one to here and one to this pad. That's all I did. But everything else is the exact same. Wow. So that was pretty frustrating. Um, I was I spent, honestly, hours trying to figure out what the hell was wrong with this. And I thought it was my end. I thought I screwed up. 
but it had nothing to do with my wiring, had nothing to do with anything, except for this was a defective board, okay? So that being said, if you guys are going to pick one of these up, maybe pick up a couple if you're going to attempt this. If you pick up two or three, it's only going to be $10, $15. That's still a hell of a lot cheaper than the pound. But, you know, if you pick up one and it doesn't work, you're going to think it's the video when it's not. It's actually the board. So for me to get three and to find one bunk board already, yeah, <laughs> this is almost like those uh, Chinese adapters. You know, when they work, they work great. If they're not going to work, they're not going to work right from the beginning. So, um, so that's exactly what this did. For some reason, it was displaying. It was displaying in HD, but... It was displaying in pink. I researched it. I went crazy last night, guys. I thought it was something I did. I'm like, oh, no, I made a video. Anyway, I figured everything out. This board, something's wrong with it. The chips or uh, something that I can't see because I looked it over, too. I tried to save the board. Hey, you know what? This, for the money I spent, the five bucks, I got a jack. I got a couple of resistors, and I got an HDMI port out of it because that's trash. But there's the finished product here. I'm going to test it up right now. We're going to do it quick and dirty right here in uh, the laboratory on the small TV just to test it out because I do have an Xbox right next to me here. Uh, we're just going to test it out real quick. And if that looks good, then we're going to bring it out to the living room and put it on the uh, big screen TV. Okay, guys, so the wiring is exactly the same. Everything is exactly the same. The only problem was this board. So... Let's hook this up to the original Xbox show. Okay, so we have our HDMI connection there. Okay, we have our Xbox here. Hit power here. With any luck, we should be displayed, not in pink. <laughs> okay, there we go. 4, 480p, because that's what the BIOS is. See a little bit of lines going on because this is a version 1.0 Xbox. Actually, that doesn't look too bad right there. Okay, so it does work. Now is it going to display in uh, HD? Give it a second to boot. Bomb. 1080, crystal clear. Okay. Now, any distortion you guys are seeing right now, that's just um, the the reflection of the camera recording the TV. But I assure you, um, it looks great. So, maybe we can go into some of the lettering here so you can see. You know, like that's, that's pretty good. Like, you guys, you know, five bucks. Yeah, okay, you might have to order a couple, but, I mean, still a lot cheaper. And that's that looks freaking excellent. Okay. So, you know what? Let's, uh, let's hook it up. Let's actually, you know what? Let's wrap it up. I want to put this inside the case so it looks something like this. And uh, let's bring it to my, uh, my good Xbox in my living room there. Let's hook it up to the big screen and see how she looks on the big screen. Okay, but there's one more thing before we go out to the front that I just want to say. Um, before you put this back in, you obviously want to attach your shielding. So don't go too short with the wires or else this is going to be difficult, okay? You attach your shielding. You put the wires and the shielding underneath the board and slide everything in very, very, very slowly, okay, guys? If you want to go crazy with the hot glue inside, you can, okay? And the way I finished it off was I actually just grabbed uh, this piece that was left over and I just cut this piece out and slid it over top. You can hot glue the crap out of everything if you want. She'll never move and she'll stay just, just like this and that's it. Yeah, let's go bring it into the living room and hook it up to my uh, X3CP. Guys, got her hooked up to the front here. She's looking gorgeous. Running 720p right now. Um, I think she looks great, guys. Just running my uh, XBMC for gamers. This is what I keep in my living room. I'm not going to go through a preview of this yet. Um, also, there's going to be a link in the download section. Uh, sorry, in the um, information section of the video. I'm going to give you guys a PDF showing uh, the download link to the schematics. So 
And also, I want to take this time right now to thank uh, Mr. Uh, James for making that schematic and taking time with me. But you can see how good she's working. It's my X3 here, okay? She's running pretty good, 720. No trickery. And we're running the HDMI adapter there, guys, okay? So I just wanted to show you that. We're not previewing the build or nothing. I just wanted to show you some of the stuff here, guys, okay? So yeah, if you guys like this video, please press that like button. If you guys don't like this video, you can always press that dislike button. Please, I urge you guys, subscribe to the channel and watch the entire videos. Okay, guys, it really helps me out. Anyway, I hope you guys learned how to make a HDMI adapter for little money that runs just as good as the big boys, baby. This is Retro Pro Frank, and I'm out.